What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of What's on the Menu, Monday edition, June 8th. I am in a different hotel room again. Let's just see if I can set the Guinness World Record. Nonstop. You know, how are we doing this morning? Dude, I'm doing wonderful. How about you? We have tons of stuff to get today. Packed Monday. Let's get right into this. 7.51 a.m. this morning from Carl Ravage. The MLB, we've talked about it ad nauseum. They are really trying to push for a season to start. Here's the proposals. 75% prorated salary, 76-game season, playoff pool money, no draft. The regular season ends September 27th, and they're aiming to have the playoffs end around Halloween. What are your thoughts? My initial reaction was, okay, cool, we're getting closer. And then I instantly went to, like, the players didn't like this very much. So almost like, a, almost like a step back. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing. We'll see. Um, this is something that we just got to keep our eyes on. And until middle ground's found, I don't know. I don't see much change happening soon. There is a sense of urgency now because, as I mentioned, we're almost halfway through June. Time is ticking very loudly. So yeah, I think it's a step back, but let's just let it breathe. The ball is in the player's court now. So yeah. speaking of other players, oh, such yeah. as the college football. Let's go. <sighs> Your beloved Ohio State Buckeyes players are returning to the Woody Hayes Sports Complex in Columbus, Ohio. This means a lot because just a couple weeks ago, no one knew if there was going to be a season. Now you have players that are able to get to the campus and work out. What does this mean for the Big Ten? I mean, they are a powerhouse team, presumably going to be ranked in the top five. How do you feel about this? Listen, positive vibes only. It's Monday. Good things are happening everywhere. There Darn will, be, there will be a football season, and I'm going to go out on a limb. There will be fans in the stadium for football season. It is June 8th, and I am positive with that take. Mark that, please. Mark it, clip it. I'll see you guys in August. Over 50% capacity? I think 50% will be the starting point, but I do believe that as long as we don't get the huge second wave, Mm-hmm. I think that will be at least 50% capacity through football season. I hold you to it. Right now in Texas, they are 50%. But schools in California, it's looking like, I don't know if there's going to be any fans. The fact that they are returning to campus, God damn it, this means so yeah, much. A lot of like, things are changing. Go. A lot of things are changing. God, we are fired up. What a great Dude, speaking, item list for the menu. Speaking of things changing, this weekend was UFC 250. The UFC has done an incredible job throughout this pandemic. First being the first sports back, and two, the quality of fights that they put on their cards have been unbelievable. They had four fight of the night bonuses on this card. There were so many good fights. One thing, shout out Amanda Nunez. Yes. Undisputed GOAT. Uh, just beats the shit out of Felicia Spencer. Oh, yeah. Cody Garbrandt's I, back, too. How is she not on the Mount Rushmore, right? And I'm including men as well. She is. In my opinion. She has to be, right? There's yeah. no there's she is, no more opinion. disputing. She has really the, solidified her position in that. Nunez is different. She, different league. Yeah, she is just different. She's dominant on every different aspect of the like, mat or on the mm-hmm. cage. She's great on the floor. She's great on her feet. Her submissions are top notch. Her striking is unbelievable. I mean, I don't want to get in the ring with her ever. Unanimous decision Saturday night. Another funny one. Sean O'Malley knocks out Eddie Wineland. He's going in and out, in and out. He does a fan. Oh! Oh! Dude looks like Riff Raff, but he man, does. he delivered a knockout that sent Twitter shaking. Dude, I was that wasn't watching even, it. That wasn't yeah. even the best knockout. Cody Garbrandt's knockout was the most unbelievable. Well, somehow attacks the body late in the round. <laughs> But it's, it was the most unbelievable knockout I've seen in the UFC. I tweeted about it. That one shook me to its core. So and I've known Cody Garbrandt since, like, 2007. He grew up in the same, like, close to hometown by me and yeah. was an elite Ohio wrestler. He had to practice at Perry sometimes. Like, our schools had, yeah. like, mixed practices. But, like, he was just so good that he would come up and practice at our school. And the best wrestling I've ever seen in my life would happen between him and a guy on my team named Seth Horner, who were both state champs as like very young ages. It didn't work out for them like going next level, but best wrestling I've ever seen in my life. Well, is that the best bird fornicating in the background that you've ever heard in your life? What's going on over there? <laughs> Listen, I have like a parrot or something outside my window. Is it mating season? God, it sounds like an, like an aviary. <laughs> I hear it all the time. I, I'm more, up at like 6.30 because of it. One more thing with UFC. So Amanda Nunez, Lioness, Undisputed Goat, yep. Sean O'Malley, your boy. 
someone else made news. Ooh. Conor McGregor retires over Twitter. Again, a great card of fights, right? Like, there was plenty of stuff that we could sink our teeth into. And Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor, had to steal the show. The Irishman. What is your reaction to him retiring? And is this the last bit? Or is he pointing to Brett Favre going to come back again? <laughs> McGregor is not done. Right now, the UFC is having money disputes with some of their guys like Mastodon and Conor. Yeah. They, don't, they just don't want to pay the big money that, like, boxing pays. Boxing pays unbelievable money. And I think the UFC is a better quality show than, like, a boxing pay-per-view. So these fighters are trying to get their own bags now. And the UFC is just like, listen, we, you guys signed a contract. Mm -hmm. We have to offer you three fights. You don't have to accept three fights. If we offer you three fights and you don't accept them, you can go do your own thing. That's kind of how the UFC is playing this right now. And the fighters are kind of just along the lines of they're trying to get their money. So I think this was just a publicity stunt by McGregor trying to get his. So he turns 32 in July. Does that mean anything? Could you still mm -hmm. say he's in his physical prime? Yeah, I think McGregor's still towards the top. But I think that he still has a lot of good fights left. Yeah. So you, you would go on record saying that he, there's a good chance that he would come back. This is just him McGregor, yeah, McGregor's again, betting on himself, trying to get more money. Because that's, yeah. that's what his ploy seems like. That's what he yeah. did a couple, what was it, a couple years ago? I wanted to see a rematch with Khabib. I thought that was interesting a couple years ago when Khabib beat him. I wanted Eventually, to see I did so. that way. I think that's what he's building towards. I don't know. I think he's smart with the way he approaches the business. But we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. Ending on this. The beaches are completely reopened. And I, this is important because there was a lot of our sanity that was taken away during the quarantine to when we weren't allowed at the beach and the boardwalk, we weren't allowed to go on it either. Were you on the boardwalk this morning? And can you give me a picture of what it looked like? I was on the boardwalk this morning. It yes! served as... It's back! It was the it's best back! mental health relief that I've had since Rona came up. Yes, yes. So since I moved, I literally, I mean, I live 10 steps from the boardwalk. I would run the boardwalk every morning um, and then it shut down on me. I tried to run on the sidewalks and it just wasn't the same for me. Today, they opened back up. I was out there, 7.15. I was on the boardwalk. Dude, it was awesome. Was it it was nice out. No, it wasn't packed at all. Okay. Uh, there were people, but it wasn't packed. It yeah. was fine to run. I didn't have to like tell anyone, excuse me or anything like when I was running. Um, mm -hmm. No, I'm so excited. So excited to have some of that sanity back. Now you can finally lay out again. Yep. I need to get some color, as you can see. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, same. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited that uh, we can lay out and the boardwalk opening. So normalcy is returning. So yeah. normalcy is returning. Bars are reopening. Restaurants are reopening. This is a lot. I'll end on this. Dale, Dan Bilzerian is finishing his autobiography today. Are you purchasing a copy of that book? Yeah, absolutely. Don't absolutely. have to think twice about it. How about you? <laughs> I love it. All right, Dale. Great job today. Packed Monday. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Follow What's on the Menu daily on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. Follow Dale. Follow myself. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's get it.